Good morning. Guess what we're making today? The answer is bagels. I mean, they saw the bagel. You guys know it's bagels. My recipe isn't exactly traditional. It starts off with a cooked paste of flour and water. This pre-gelatinizes some of the starches and the flour, and it really improves their ability to retain moisture. The biggest thing that this does is increase the shelf life of the bagels. They stay fresh for days. Okay, so I've got a little bit of flour, some water, just gonna whisk it together. In goes the water. Whisk it just to get out all the lumps. Once the paste is nice and smooth, gonna pop it on medium heat and gonna cook it till it's like a thick mashed potato-y kind of paste. We're not talking leftover mashed potatoes. We're talking like creamy mashed potatoes that are thick, just ready for a big pile of gravy kind of a thing. And we're done. This is a real advanced technique called banging that against the side of the pan. Step two, just scraping this business out onto a plate. Cover it with a little bit of plastic wrap and get it into a nice even layer. That'll help it cool faster without drying out. This is a good make ahead step if you wanna do this a day in advance and let it sit at cool room temperature or pop it in the fridge and that way you can get making bagels whenever you're ready. Otherwise, it'll cool in about 30 minutes. Next phase, adding flour to the food processor. A little bit of sugar. Just there to help with browning, help with rise, not a huge deal. Instant dry yeast, salt. Combine these for a few seconds. Once the flour and dry ingredients are combined, adding our cooked flour paste, which is a gloopy mess. Water's going in. And now I'm gonna process this for like 90 seconds. Or until the dough comes together in a smooth elastic ball. Your miles may vary depending on the capacity and power of your machine. Right here, we'll have like a little icon of a clock and like little hands are gonna be going like really fast. Okay, it's coming together, it's happening. It's getting so rowdy. Let's check on it. Okay, so here's a little piece of dough. I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it, I'm pulling it, but it's kind of tearing. It means it's not ready. Let's keep going. Keep going. It's thrilling. Stretching it. If your dough can't do this, your bagels are gonna suck. So I'm gonna take this dough off the machine and just turn it onto the clean counter and divide it into pieces for our bagels. You can use a scale to divide them into eight equal sized pieces, or you can use your eyeballs and your intuition or a combination thereof. This makes about eight three ounce bagels. So for this section, I'm just shaping them into very rough pieces. So the idea is to try and keep it pinched between the counter and the heel of your hand with your fingers kind of keeping it in bound so it doesn't get away from you. So now that all the dough has been booled up, it just needs to relax for about 15 minutes before we shape it into bagels. Now that the bagel dough has had a little bit of a chance to relax, I'm gonna shape them into proper bagels. Step one is to have a parchment lined baking sheet, a little bit of pan spray to grease it lightly. This just prevents the bagels from sticking. Poke a hole right in the middle of the bagel until my finger comes through. And then just kind of slowly stretch it into a ring. When it's about three and a quarter inches, transfer it to the prepared sheet tray. It's important that the hole is stretched adequately, otherwise it'll just bake into a bagel belly button and that's, that's not what anybody wants. We want a real bagel. I bet you wish you could do that. Got some restaurant grade food service film. I even have that in my actual house. So these are gonna go in the fridge you're not gonna see any kind of major rise overnight. This is not where bagels do their rising. So don't look for that. Don't worry if you don't see it. Sweet dreams, guys. I hope you all dream of being boiled alive and then baked in the oven, split with a sharp knife and slathered in cream cheese for my benefit. Okay, We've got our bagels that have been chilling overnight in the fridge. There's not a lot of visual difference between how they were when we put them to bed. That's okay. This is where the magic happens. 
bring this water to a boil, along with a generous splash of barley malt syrup. Wow, that did not make a clean release. Beautiful. Barley malt syrup is the secret to getting a nice, super glossy crust and an extra layer of flavor thanks to Maillard browning. There it is. We're gonna do them for about 30 seconds per side. It's okay to do a few bagels at a time. Adding a bunch of bagels all at once is gonna drop the temperature. So this is what we wanna do. And then they're gonna start to float to the top because they're rising. There's 30 seconds, now I'll flip. There's the first batch. Move these guys right on over to the parchment. Thrill as we boil the bagels. Okay, I'm gonna pop these in the oven. We've got some freshly baked bagels. And once they've had a chance to cool, you can grab your favorite one and give it a slice. I like this guy, it's kind of a good shape. Here we go, right across the middle. Ta-da! So we've got a nice crumb structure. It's not too tight, too close, but it's not too open. It's not an airy bread. I know this is like somewhat tacky, but I'm just ready for a pound of cream cheese. And I'm okay with that. So chewy, but really tender and not tough. You don't have to like struggle to get a bite. Can you see the thin eggshell crust that has developed there? Do you want some of the side can action? Side can action. Chewy, not tough. Crispy, not crunchy. Plain, but flavorful. It's everything I want in a bagel.